Rechner. Hello. <laughs> yes, here we are. Yes. Here we are. Okay, we did some pre-production, got some things out of the way. Um, I uh, we're going to skip the news a bit. The only thing that still is left on my page is: Did you see the? Um, because we talked about books last week. Uh, did you see the post from Nuclear War Now? Yeah, I saw it with the container ship. Uh... Incredible. <laughs> don't don't do books, folks. Don't do books. How I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a book myself in 2021. So. Okay, about the label? Yeah. No. Yeah. It, um, you will see it when it's there. Okay. Um, like I said, we're going to skip the news because this is the episode we're going to talk about Ashbor and Cell Voices and everything around them. Um, we pulled out some records. We listened to a few. You listened to a few. I listened to a few. There was no yeah. in which one. So let's just dig in. Um, it started last week when I mentioned this one. Yes. This is the split between both of them. First thing I got from them. I don't remember why I bought it back in the, back in the day because it's pretty old. Yeah, and I don't see a don't see a year, but I think it's easily uh, 2012 or 13 or so. Probably because it's really early in their both of their discographies or in their rise, if yeah. you will. Um, yeah, that date should be. I think I have the same timeline a bit with those bands. Um, I think 2010. I started. 2010. Yeah, 2010. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say I started listening to Tao 2010 and then discovered Galit Media, discovered Corellis, and then it was further and further. Um, so, yeah, 2010. I think 2012, around the split and around the time, I don't know, maybe 13 when Bloodlands came out. I think that's when I started to notice. Um, I, I even see that the last Fell Voices is uh, the Regnum Saturni is 2013. Yeah, such a long time ago. That's uh, the first or the only time they played Roadburn was 2013, and that record was out, I think. Then I, th I think they toured that record because yeah, listening to awesome. it, um, the set they played at the Batcave was 90%, I think, that record because I don't remember okay. any of any of the other material being played. Knowing that they were early in the day and a short set, well, short, road burn short, I guess. But super intense. What team are you to that tonight? Fell Voices or Ash War? Um, while listening to the, the records the last weeks, I, I, I always thought I was more of an Ash War fan, mm -hmm. but while listening to the records, I started with Fell Voice, and I thought this is this is much better than Ashbor. It's it's less, um, it's more complicated a bit. It's harder to get into really. While uh, Ashbor is, you can put it on, and the riffs are so atmospheric. They they take you with you. They take you with them. But so because during the last up. weeks, during the last weeks, I was like, ah, oh, Fell Voices. I like it a lot better. It's more psychedelic, also. Okay. Um, but now, yesterday and today, today I put on the Irrepassable Gate from uh, Ash Border. They're lost from 2016, I think. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is from 2016, indeed. Um, for me, it's the other way around. I always thought I was a more of a foul voice guy, but listening back. <laughs> I think for all the reasons you are saying, I kind of prefer the Ashbor stuff now. Yeah. What surprised me the most was um, when um, I have to grab my notes. When um, Gold of Ages was released, the date on that, that was 2012. I was always under the impression that it came after Bloodlands, which is... I don't know. No, I think Bloodlands are sorts. Bloodlands are sort of leftovers from Call of Ages, I thought. Ah, okay. That kind of explains it. Call of Ages is 2012 and then Bloodlands is 2013. So an EP after yeah, Call of Ages. That's kind of, that kind of makes sense. I um I listened back to it thinking because I thought you said last time that you didn't like that record. 
I didn't like Call of Ages, they don't uh, but I, I did like the EP, mm -hmm. but um, the usual perception in, in the media and so is, is that the EP is not so good and Call of Ages is a, a super record. Yeah. But now listening to it today, Call of Ages, I listened to it after the Irrepassable Gate. Um, I listened to it in my car, so not ideal, but but um, the the guitar sound is a bit yeah, a bit more bit difficult for me. I don't know, but um, I did like it. Yeah. On Call of Ages, I did like it. Yeah, so yeah. it was on it was on my to sell list, but it just dropped off my to sell list. <laughs> I'm glad because what, listening back to it, the first track reminded me. Of it took me out of the complete it took me completely out of um american black metal the sound is much more something like finnish i think because the guitars sound totally different than more harsh guitars or harsh yeah, guitars or, or less less polished sound yeah. it's not per se harsh but it's it's not as polished as uh, the last yeah. one it kind of starts off weird with this very dry basic drum fill, but when a drummer plays, if you say to a drummer, play a drum fill, he plays that. But then then I thought, when, oh, yours, right? <laughs> but then it just started going into the, that cleaner, yeah, harsh, almost guitar sounds, and uh, yeah, it went from there. I think there's a lot of variation in that record, going from track to track. It's not just, like, Irrepassable Gate, I had less variation, but there was more room in the tracks. Listen, I guess it's not as dense as uh, Cold of Ages. No, no, but it it has variation because it has the the faster and melodic parts and the the post rockish um, yeah. layers on layers. But it also has doomy parts, mm -hmm. something both both bands have um, the the doomy slow parts, which. Um, I always thought fell voices had more, but now they, they also uh, struck me listening to Ashbor. Yeah. Um, and I also noticed like Ashbor um, fell voices, I mean, they often have like the, the very monotonous guitar thing mm -hmm. where just mm -hmm. one note is played like 20, 30, 40 seconds. But this also, um, I noticed this also today at the, at the Ashbar, I think Irrepressible Gate. It may have been Call of Ages. I don't remember. Okay. But they have, they have the same as well, like the very long, get yeah, bit trance inducing uh, stuff. Yeah, the rep that keeps going, I guess. Um, yeah, I think um, Irrepressible Gate has a lot of lot more melody to it than. Um, yeah, yeah. Definitely. But, the weird track on this is the uh, the Grey Marrow, I think, because it starts. It's the most doomy track on the on the entire record. I think the third track maybe, but then it goes into this second part, which is maybe the most schizophrenic guitar part they ever did. So it's I'm not saying there's no variation, but I think the um, yeah the sound is more rounder or unified on the uh, on the last one. Yeah, definitely. I don't have a track list. There are no tracks on here. I don't see a track list. Ah, yeah, irrepressible gate, less red spirit, less green. Ah, gray marrow. Yeah. The song, the song that hit me was "Rotten Firmament," which is twelve minutes. The song okay. after "Gray Marrow." It's, it's a very, almost a sludgy song, and then it gets into some. The second part of that song, I can hear where something like Beatles maybe got. Yeah, I uh, got their stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a great record. I remember this came out the second time they played in 2017. I always say when they played, I mean Roadburn, of course. Um, and it was when it, it was on Profound Lore, just like the Call of Ages, but stylistically, it's also night and day. The Call of Ages is, looks like a black metal record, if you will, and this looks. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I bought a long sleeve yeah. of Roadburn, and it had. It had like this on the sleeve and go over the sleeves. Um, I had a few a long sleeve. <laughs> if you do a long sleeve, you have to go full out. Yeah, but go <laughs> I'm not sure. 
Yeah, great record. Um, With uh, lis listening to Ash Border, I also got the Lure reference, uh, which when oh, we yeah. talked about Lure, I said, oh, it reminds me of Ash Border. I did get uh, the reference uh, very clear, especially with the uh, Irrepassable Gate. Mm -hmm. I think there that's where most people get their US connection. You always think about Leviathan or something like that or disaster, but it's actually more, you know, newer material like hash borer and stuff like that. Um, yeah, well, the thing that stood out all, over all the releases, and I, I don't think there's a weak one. I think the demo I heard. Um, there was one of the two demos which I didn't like. No, I don't know. I don't know if it's the one with the brownish cover with a gold logo or the black cover with the red logo, because <laughs> it's so, yeah, they're I'm all sure. untitled. And... One is a rehearsed demo, I think, and one is just a demo, something like that. But um, the which the one I heard was 2008, 2009, I think I written down here. Uh, but that was almost post-rock. Yeah, that's the one I, I didn't really like. It had little drum mistakes, and that's where I was going. The um, the demo has those drum mistakes, but for as an overarching thing, for all the releases, the drum sound is incredible. I think the double bass drum and the way the the tom sounds on these records are. Uh, I was wondering if they had a producer for the Irrepassable Gate and a different one for the rest, because there's a difference in sounds, I guess. But I didn't look that up. The thing that I had with Irrepassable Gate was that uh, the drums are there, mm -hmm. but they it's all about guitars and melodies and the drums are there but they they totally yeah they just support the music but they don't stand out or so they never they, they never go crazy or they don't do or do crazy fills or stuff like that but they are they are very supportive they're in a very supportive role because i don't think um i'm not sure but i don't think there's bass uh hmm. haven't thought about that it, I don't miss it. I don't miss it at all. There is bass on the irrepressible gate. No, no, they do have bass because I read. Um, no, I'm fucking up stuff because they have three guitar players, right? On the irrepressible gate, there are two guitar players, but on Call of Ages, there are three guitar players. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was what I was confused about. They had a bass player, yeah. But that's one of the differences with um, fell voices for me. There, the drum work does stand out. Okay. May maybe because of the sound here and there. Sometimes you have like the snare, which is really sound like in a rehearsal room or so. But then you have the, the double bass or the, the kick drum. Mm -hmm. It sounds very organic. Which I also find back in um, Yellow Eyes, the last Yellow Eyes records, yeah. the double bass. When you put on that double bass, you can immediately hear it's Yellow Eyes. It's uh, it's Michael Rekovic, right? Yeah, he's, he's a drummer for all um, for all the things. I think it's part. It has partly to do with uh, the fact that the guitar sound is it's flipped around because the guitar sound has a. Like you said, a line that just goes, keep going and going and going. And the drummer has the freedom to play what he wants, basically, because there is no variation. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. The other one yep. than anymore, I think. Um, but the fact that he is a incredible drummer. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not, I think, if you have a, a technically school drummer watching, mm -hmm. says, oh, man, you're doing everything wrong. Yeah, probably. <laughs> if, if you see him, uh, drummers, they play like, like this, and he, he goes like this. So I don't know how he does the blast beats, but he drums with his whole arm, you know, while singing or shouting or whatever. But I was wondering, because I looked um, at his other bands on the metal <laughs> archives, and he does drums in everyone. But in my memory, when seeing Yellow Eyes in Antwerp, he, he, had, he was playing guitars and he was the frontman. That was at Kafka, right? Yeah. Or was he the drummer? In my memory, he was he was 
the front man, guitar and singing. You know, with Farnham on stage, mm -hmm. he played bass and he sang, if I remember correctly. Maybe it's just whatever he wants at that time, but you have to have work, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it depends on which musicians he can gather to go on tour. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, because he does he does play guitar and stuff. Because in um, which project is it? Um, Yellow Eyes. He does everything. And he has just session music. Ah, if he catches, he does everything. Ah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Him Rekovic, everything. <laughs> <laughs> But he has a lot of a lot of great bands. Looking at these fell voices, Ruin Lust. I never dug in, but is it you know it? Is it more death metal? It is. Uh, it's not more death metal. I would say it's also um, um, the thing I have is black metal. Um, I got from Adam. I mean, ten years ago, I guess on the uh, psychedelic, psychedelic violence, the label from Ashbor, their first. I think it's a demo. Um, so yeah, it is more black metal in my memory. I just picked yeah. it up because I was looking what do I have from these guys that is not just Ed Horror or Fell Voice. And this popped up. So I know they have another full length, but I, I don't think I can remember what that is or what that sounds like. Ruin Lust. Yeah. If I see cover, it will come back to me, but. And then uh, you have Sleep Sleepwalker, which is a one-man post-rock project, if I recall correctly. I know I asked him at, at his merch table in uh, 2000, no, 2010, I won't say, at Kafka with the Yellow Eyes show. Yeah. I asked him at his merch table, oh, what is all this? And he had a, a Sleepwalker CD or so, and it, or a vinyl, and it, he said, yeah, it's more post-rock. Sleepwalkers is the, or Sleepwalker, I'm not sure, is uh, the band that kind of connects them, all the um, the major players, because that guy is in there, the, um, the guy we talked about, Michael, let's call him, uh, but like Mike Stone, uh, the guitarist, and I think also the singer for Ashbor is also in that band, so that's another band that okay. connects them. I don't know, live or studio, um, but yeah, that guy is... I mean, if you start looking at their names, the guys that are in A Fell Voice and B Eshbor, their list of bands, <laughs> I mean, we just talked about five bands, that's one guy, but the list mm. of bands, projects that came out of those two bands is mind boggling. It's almost unbelievable. Like the uh, two guys, the Mike Stone and Rory Flay, I think they started Tasu Batlab, which is another episode in itself. Mm. From Triumper file to Utsalu to all the bands on that label. I maybe in the later I fell off a bit and I don't know if there are stinkers in there, but all those tapes and all those records are insane. Mm. Crazy. Yeah, if I look at other bands of Mike, Vanim, really great. Yeah. Catch is really great. Yellow Ford. Eyes is really great. Ford. And you have which one? Ford. Yeah. Yeah, Ford is. That's how if I, I once saw a Facebook post from somebody asking, do you have uh, recommendations for records that sound like um, The Mysterious from Mayhem? And mm -hmm. for me, Ford, the full length of Ford is, is yeah, is very oh, no, may, mayhem-like. It's in my memory because it's a long time since I listened to it. Is but the, Is that the purple one, this one? Yeah, that's that one. Okay. This will go on next because I didn't delve too much into um, into the other records because that would be too insane to also listen to those. But uh, yeah, they have a lot of shit that they um, that they released. Just uh, the five of them, let alone whatever else came out of them. Um, is there so the record you were going to sell was Call of Ages? You didn't like it. You uh, you kind of came around to it. Yeah, yeah, I was listening to it, and it has, it has, um, yeah, it's just, just also a great record. Yeah, if you pay attention, it's great. If you put it on in the background, maybe it's, yeah, not so good. But 
the one I was um, made because I listened to Ashbor from the Earth Vessel Gate back. So I, I ended on the demo and then I started Foul Voices. But I started from the early demo material. I think I, I don't have demo two or something like it. The black and white. Do you have that one? This is the first one, I think. That I have. This is the second one. Yeah, that with the uh, the the lake. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's a, it's a lake with rocks and trees. Yeah. That's the second one, I think. And then you have this is the this is called on Metal Archive. It's called two. Two. It's a full length, but it's, it's also yeah. It's, that's the one I didn't care for. If I had to let one go, it would be this one. Yeah, I think I think if I have to let one go, it would be the the second demo. I haven't heard that one, so yeah. it's not that it's bad, but it's it, yeah. it really it really demands your attention because it's I don't know it's it's um it's possible it's that I need... coherent maybe yeah it's possible I need to listen more, but it's very sparse on vocals. So there are yeah. a lot of passages that it goes on and on and on. It's not, yeah. The um, the best thing on it is in the um, what I have second track around the four minute mark. There's a guitar sound that uh, that is the best thing they ever had in my opinion. But then it transfers into this feedback loop, I guess, and he just plays these two notes. And I have here, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. it's just on and on and on. So annoying, and then yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. I I'll give it one more shot, but uh, it's weird. That's the one I didn't like. Um, what I noticed is that um, the first demo sounds real. It's I think it's played live because it's no just, idea. I, um, where was I going with this? Um, yeah, that I love that about them. That is strictly a demo it is you know it's the demo material not like demos these days like lure is also a demo that's not a demo <laughs> i mean it's fully formed three great tracks so i like yeah. that you hear the mistakes in their in their first ep and then when you go to something like uh Regnum saturni which is three tracks uh, around 20 minutes each so about an hour and it's just yeah, all all their songs are one side of a of a vinyl. Yeah, but I mean, the sound on that, that I immediately was transported back to that uh, to that live gig. It was it's so intense. It doesn't have an intro. It doesn't have an outro per se. It just it starts. It keeps going. It keeps going. And that's what uh, I I like it. Yeah, you you have you have the the annoying sounds tying uh, the songs together. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's their thing, annoying sound. <laughs> they are. But it's a great record, yeah. It reminds me a lot of uh, the Empyrean Grace uh, tape from I Raise the Snow Yamagi. Okay. There is a lot of similarity between those two. Did they play together? No, Empyrean Grace is, a, I think, a one man project. And it's only only uh, exists from this year. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm there. It's, uh, it, it, one of those last tapes they released. Yeah. But it's very similar, and it's um, not complex, but very trans-inducing because of the super long repetition and and. Few variation on uh, on guitar. It popped in my head. Um, that's why I asked that they play together because the the guy from Turia must have seen was at Roadburn every time. I guess must have seen them play because it, the second time they came around, it was not uh, Fell Voices that played, but it was Yellow Eyes, Vorde, Ashbor. Vorde? I've never seen Vorde live. Was it Vanum? Vanum Van, Van played, yeah. Yellow Eyes played in the. It was Yellow Eyes opened it at the Patronat, I think, one day, and they had a lot of technical difficulties. Hmm, I don't know. I kind of left. And the Ash Borer show the second time was very mediocre. That's one of the, the first. 
in the new Batcave, one of the first shows of the fest. And yeah. I think they had some technical difficulties because the guy, the front guy, was was watching uh, his, his drummer and, and discussing things on stage. And it was was okay, but yeah, nothing special. I think the the 2013 set they played there was is in my mind still the the more overpowering. That was the Cold of Ages material and the Bloodlands material, and the, the other set was the best. Yeah. No. Not only do the records are night and day, but uh, I think the live the live show was too. Maybe they, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they weren't ready to play those songs. I'm not sure because they are iconic musicians. So I don't know. Or first day of the tour when you come from the states. It's, yeah, I know. In the 2013, um, the first time they played, it was the last of the of the tour. They were played. They played perfectly. Uh, they were just hooked into each other. I know that because they, uh, I mailed them beforehand if they could hold a record for me, the, the special release Bloodlands. Um, and one of the guys was going to hold it for me. He lost it or he sold it. I don't know. And they, uh, they gave me the tape instead. Or I bought the tape instead because I don't think I took it for free, but still had the tape. Which is too bad because all those limited things by them. Um, are really worth it. The artwork is always a bit better. It even has the dates for the Euro tour on oh, here. Oh, cool. So Tilburg was the third last 20 of April. And that's the the first time. This is the first time they played here. Yeah. And Amsterdam is, is one or two days after that? Yes. So you have uh, Brussels on the 19th. That was where he thought he was going to give me the record because he knew I was from Belgium, but I was at Rover. Ah, okay. yeah. Yeah. And you have the 21 is Utrecht and 22 is Amsterdam. I went to Amsterdam. Why was that? To see, to see them again. Uh, it was it was very good, especially um, Fell Voices, because they played the track from The Split, which is my favorite track of them. Okay. So... The only track I haven't heard because on Bandcamp there's on I found only the track of Ashbor from that split, so that's another okay. one I re-listen to now. Yeah, you should. It's it's really yeah, really great. I'm diving in to see what else. Do we have something special vinyl wise from them? I don't think so. Don't know. No limited or screen printed stuff. I have no idea. I know this one. This one exists in a few versions, I think. The first demo, but I don't think this is a special edition or so. I have no. I have no idea. I think we both have. Yeah, this this one is on Vendetta. Yeah, same one. Same one. The second one, the red one, is on. Should be on the Santa. I will check. Nerd. I don't always go for special editions or depends on the band. Like from Altigale, I like special edition because it's one of my favorite bands. Did you buy their new special edition? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. It's uh, the Santa or Fold case. There is a version, there's a black version of this one, which has some, some extra patches and stuff like that. Maybe a screen printed, but no, it's the, uh, the Irrepressible Gate and Cold of Ages have really nice editions. And it's weird for a band that I follow since 2012. I never got around a special edition, which is odd for me because I'm weird like that. Okay. The only thing special I have, and that is it's not going to be special if you have the same thing, but you have this one. But uh, this is the uh, the demo LP, and it is the the Swamp Green edition, which I got from I bought from the guy from Nismog. Uh, no, no, this is just black. I bought from that uh, the guy from Nismog at Roadburn. He had um, he just had a personal bin that he was carrying around records from his collection that he had doubles for, because they're all friends with him. Um, so he was really cool shit, but a lot of things. Love. Of course. Of course. 
Um, the only thing I have to show is uh, this one is kind of cool. The uh, compilation box. This is on uh, psychic violence again. Yeah, it's their label or their. No. Uh, it's tape box. Tape box. Yeah, which which tapes are in there? Uh, this is a compilation of. Um, so the problem with these two bands is that they have a lot of untitled <laughs> uh, tracks, but yep, untitled records with untitled tracks. Yes, of course. Kind of dark here, but I'll try <clears throat> to light a bit. Yeah, tape one. Uh, in the midst of life, we are in debt uh, against the doomsday silence. It's from. 2011, and then tape two is 2009, 2010. It's almost unreadable. It's demo material. So, ah, it's the split with Fell Voices, the 2009 demo, and then the first demo. So, yeah, demo comp and split. So, yeah, in, in, um, in the midst of life, we are, and that is the first track of the first full length. Okay. So, Call of Ages, then? No, just Ashbor. Ah, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ashbor full length. Yeah. Um, and the very last, last thing are these two. Uh, if you have checked one band, I think, out of the entire stack. Um, I'm not sure who is in here, but it's released by Psychic Violence. Um, I think some Ashbor guys that are in here or some fell voices guys there is uh, the guy from Ms. Morris maybe also in here I'm really not sure but this is Urzeit okay uh, two tapes one is just called Urzeit and the other one I think I have a tape from them there it's a tape wrapped in a in a clot or something yeah that's over there I think maybe that's a Ms. Morris tape but I have one of them, maybe in a patch or something. Like that. But I like these two very much. Um, yeah, a bit on the raw side, psychic violence. So, so the early material, like early Ash Four, I guess. But really worth it. I'm not sure if they. I, ever... I have uh, Urzeit die Geschichte Bischer. Yeah, that's one of them. They have one record, I think. On Moshka. I'm not sure if this is the title or the split. I think this is the split. Hello. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the title of the album. What's the title? Was, it's right. their only full length, indeed. Yes. But 2016. Kind of rounds it, up, rounds it up for me. I'm going to look through my notes to see if I um I, I have I have kind of uh, I just saw I have kind of a lot of um stuff from them like Uskumralu or Predatory Light. It's with the uh, Ashbor members. Um Fanum, of course. Yes. And one of the guys is uh ex Scape Life. Oh, okay. Yeah, it seems they know each other, all those guys. This one is also worth checking out, uh, the uh, Ustalos. Ustalos. I had it in my distro, and I listened to it, and I thought, I like it, but I, I take so many records from my distro to my personal collection. Yeah. And I did, didn't do this one, and now it's sold out, I think, in, uh, with the, um, from Gilead. So I don't have it. I bought it. Uh, we went the first trip we, since we had uh, a kid, the first one, Mimi. I, uh, we went to Ghent with her. And this is the only thing I bought at consoling because it was raining so hard that weekend. We never had a trip <laughs> since we had kids. <laughs> so that's, that's the memory I have, I think. I do have a lot of um, yellow eye stuff. Yeah, I know I you I, were. I think I have almost everything. Also, the very first ones on, on a Danish label, if I recall correctly. I have a great tape of them, which is pretty early. One with a face on it or something like that. 
But I'm uh, just looking at metal archives, but they have the, the silent threads, the evening slot, and hammer of night. I'm not that good with titles from him because other yes. versions. Yeah, I think I have the dead section records version. Oh yeah. That section that was uh Lasse from Skill. I have no idea. Uh, I, I I heard it back then and I liked it, so I bought both. He had two good letters, man. Another guy that um that we lost too soon. Sure. Don't think I ever ordered ordered something from them. From uh, skill or that yeah. type. Uh, yeah. skilled, skilled. Yeah, I don't think they uh, did a lot of distros. It was always sold out, and they had some really uh, a few places that carried their records, mostly trade. Like mm -hmm. there was one in Denmark, um, a friend of him that had a great distro. Um, but yeah, wasn't spread around too much. Maybe the later ones, but the early ones are impossible. To find. I still have a few to complete the collection, so that's uh, a part. When we're going to do what we listen to, I have a new um, section that's called the want list. So think about the record you want <laughs> the public. <laughs> I'm just looking at which of the records I have. That's I do have I do have the 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 one you just showed, purple one. I also have the split with predatory light. Yes, that's in here somewhere. I should 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 get them out. So long ago, I listened to it. Um, I have something else. And about. yeah, some Vanim records, some Vilkachis records, the split with Turia, amongst mm -hmm. others. Oh yeah, what you were saying about that. Uh, oh, Mike should know Mike. They uh, they do know each other. I was uh, with my distro at the Vanem show in uh, mm -hmm. the Bay Stilberg, mm -hmm. and they were they were chatting the whole time. And they oh. clearly know each other. They also have a split to gavel catches. Yeah, that's right. But it's clear they had uh, contact before that. The surprise to me in looking at all this because I start reading about Ashbor and stuff like that. There are a lot of Vice and uh, Pitchfork articles about them. Because they were the, um, the scene darlings or those kind of media that wants to put their claws into black metal, I guess. But uh, they called it Cascadian black metal. Mm -hmm. just because it's easy to um, yeah to capture them in that um, in that realm of black metal, I guess. But um, what surprised me is that the, I'm always interested in timelines, especially my timeline and what what I was listening to when and where I started stuff like that. And in my mind, a band like Wolves in the Throne Room, talking about Cascadian black metal, was always running in the same period as um, as Ashbor. But looking back at it, like Cold of Ages is 2012, and all the records that are good, I would say, everything before Celestial Lineage from um, Wolves in the Throne Room was already released. And that kind of blew my mind that it was that early. Um, yeah, that was that early. I thought it was always, in my mind, it was always running together, but looking back at it, and that's another piece in my timeline puzzle. Wolves in the Throne Room was 2008, 2010 for me, because that I discovered them through conspiracy records. So it was yeah, just that, same. and then I delved into Tao and got to know them. So it kind of makes sense, but in my head, it was always going in parallel lines between you guys together with each other. I, I remember I worked in a metal CD and record store from 2007, 2008, and I got two hunters from Wolves in the Throne Room, and I put it on, and I didn't like it. What? I didn't like. No, it, it it just didn't get me. Okay. Now now I see the genius of that record. But because you were too young or too, your ears weren't ready for it, or yeah. You don't know. No, no, because I, I'm, I'm in black metal since 1997 or so. Okay. I, I don't know. It just didn't grab me. Well, now it does. I, um, I, I don't know which one I like better, Two Hunters or Diadem. My absolute favorite, and it's a record I maybe listen to 
three times, but it's my absolute favorite record by Wolf in the Throne Room is Black Cascade. Yeah. It's, it's so depressive and uh, overbearing and dense and just, yeah, I don't know, black that it, it's too much at that time. I now looking back into it and it reminded me of that record. I don't have it. I just have it on picture disc, but it sounds horrible from Conspiracy. So my want okay. list. Okay. My want I list. Have the, yeah. I have the ma Malevolent Grain uh, picture disc from uh, Conspiracy and it sounds, for a picture disc, sounds very good. Yeah. Like I said, I'm going to listen to it again because I, uh, it's maybe a preconceived notion that picture discs are bad, but I got the um, the Beheradin on picture disc, and that sounds incredible. So. Which one? The Oath of the Black Blood. Ah, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh. Yeah, Black Cascade. It's it's an awesome record, but the two other ones are the the classics from Cascadian black metal. If you ask me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say they are not, but just that Black Cascade was just so overbearing that um, it always stuck in my mind. That's, you know, the the best worst record by them, just because it's so impressive. Like it. But yeah, something like Two Hunters is a is a classic in that genre. I remember running at on, at Roadburn, running into a uh, one of the Weaver brothers. I think the drummer. And it was at the time I still uh, drank alcohol, so I was very uh, loose. <laughs> and I, I told him, I think 200 was out because I told him, I like all your 14 songs. Because <laughs> they have always four songs and the EP too. So yeah. I haven't listened to the demos. He said, yeah, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, um, I remember at that time when they dropped, which one was it? Um, which one was their big record? Was it Celestial Lineage? Their big record? Their first big one. I think Celestial Lineage. Yeah, for me, it's Two Hunters. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like Two Hunters was a big record, but when they got a lot of visibility, I would say. Two Hunters is like the, maybe still Two Underground. Yeah, I don't know. They they played Roadburn 2008. That's one year after Two Hunters. Okay, but maybe Celestial Lineage. They got a lot more exposure in, uh, like you say, uh, Pitchfork and that kind of media. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really follow Pitchfork or. No, no, not anymore. But that that was where where I was going. I uh, they popped up on Pitchfork. I was like, oh, they. Uh, I I was thinking the other way around. I was thinking, oh, they're you know, looking for that kind of um, press and, and they were, whoa, yeah. Hard for me to describe because it's it's uh, embarrassing, but <laughs> I was thinking they were going to go mainstream, you know what I'm saying? They were going to become a big band and stuff like that. And then um, I saw them live this tour at Roadburn on the main stage because that was in my head again. They're playing the main stage or they were becoming a big band. It's not the a little band anymore and then they played and i was like okay i am a total idiot <laughs> yeah they had a big light show they had i mean it was an incredible incredible i was going to check it out because you know it was wolves in the throne room and i was over them and then i just i went yeah it. that was great Marvel. also they had they had an extra guitar player which was a good a smart move yeah the sound was it, yeah, it imploded from the stage. It just yeah, <laughs> because I, I, as an album, Celestial Lineage for me is it's disposable. Mm. It's I okay, but it's 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 not nothing, nothing near Black Cascade or Two Hunters or Diadem or the the EP, the Malevolent Grain. Mm. Can't touch it. Tries Woven is a bit better, but I bought it. Very expensive. That's right. Played it a few times, but can't really remember anything of it now. I think my last great memory of 
of them is that Rogue Burn show. That was I mean, it's probably like you said, I was still drinking. I'm still drinking, but you know, the, the vibe you have at Rogue Burn combined with a show like that, that's just this sensory overload sensory overload visual and oral. Yeah. Thing. One of those shows that is ingrained in my memory from there. We always seem to talk about Rogue Burn. Wonder why. Yeah. So that's moved so, so the advertisement uh, that that they're gonna try to do uh, everything possible within the rules of uh, the government because Holland has gone in full lockdown since two days ago. Yep. So they don't know what's coming up. I, uh, for, I once, noticed... for once we were ahead of Holland. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed Holland was on a lockdown because all my pre-orders and orders from Holland came in at the same time. Okay. I, uh, I have like with you, I have this running order with uh, Jeff from Dawn Breed and uh, I, I did an order part one and then it was here. So. <laughs> He just everything must go right now because who knows how long the ship's going to be. Uh, I also can can I ship records to Holland right now? I'm not sure. I think okay, so. I, I shipped a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Postal services work, I guess, because I should investigate. I should. I think we'll hear soon enough. If they don't deliver the packages, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have uh, we did a uh, yeah, we did a repress for the uh, Amadra Mass Beer, Mass Four, Mass Beer, Mass Four, um, and I have like sixty orders I need to make still, but I guess it's small compared to the size you're shipping these days. Did the sale work? Um. It worked the first week, but uh, last time I did the sale, I had I had also a Facebook ad, and there were a lot of people ordering from Sweden and Norway and then the UK and from all over Europe and the US mainly. Um, and now this time, I put it online and just just put it on uh, on social media and in a, a newsletter, and I got some orders, but not as many as last time. But I was waiting for all those um, people who don't know me to order, which didn't happen. So I, I ran another ad on Facebook. One for people are already following my page to let them know, hey, there's a sale. Yeah. And one for people, yeah, you can target them like Europe. Let's say Europe and people who like, and then you can, you can say people who like certain bands, but the bands you want to target, have to have, I think, 100,000 followers. So, like, you can't target people who like Wolves in the Throne Room. Okay. You can't. You can't target people who like Marduk. Okay. Marduk, Mayhem, um, like Death, the, the, the Death Metal Band, yeah. or who like Black Metal, the, the genre. The genre. Maybe it's better to tag a genre than, than to tag a band. I don't know. And now it was it was pretty quiet, in fact. Um, but now the last two days the orders kept uh, kept running in, so that's nice. You did an Instagram promo too, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that helps. I've seen it. Well, I'm not as much. I come to Facebook for one thing, and that's because you're selling records over there. But you're not <laughs> at Facebook anymore. So the I saw the um, the post come by on Instagram. Okay. I think a lot of people are hesitant to buy records these days just because of what you're saying. Am I am I allowed to ship to, to the Netherlands and stuff? Yeah, and I, I got a got a mail from a guy from the UK. He said, I want to order records from you, but can you ship them right now or not? Yeah, we got a lot, I got a lot of those questions on um, Discord. Oh, yeah. I should put a message in my shop, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Because Iron Bonnet and the bigger labels like Amofati did it too. They had those lists constantly mm -hmm. of updating with them. But I think I I sent more as a for myself records that I'm selling than for the label these days, and I sell to American stuff like that. Not tracked, and they they all arrive. So I think America for now is kind of gridlocked postal wise because of the holidays. But after that, it should be fine. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah but and I have, I have customers from Holland asking for their record, which has been shipped three weeks ago. 
Ah, yeah. And you you can tell them, yeah. Ninety nine percent of the records arrive. I don't have a tracking number because tracking is more expensive. Blah blah blah. But do yeah. you have more patience? Yeah. But those are people who order for the first time, so that's a nasty situation as a as a label to be in. And I can't ship them new records because they ordered the uh, Chagra LP, and it's completely sold out. So I hope I hope they arrive. Well, good for you, I guess. Yeah, of course, but but I like to have yeah, yeah, yeah. O- only happy customers, you know, and having to explain, oh yeah, it's like this and like that. And guy from Sweden got his records after six weeks, and the, the box was completely damaged, but the records came out okay. So <laughs> luckily, so you're a good packer then. All right. Um... I think we have exhausted Ashbor and Pell Voices. Um, yeah, like I said, I was going to do a segment that's called the Want List. Is there a record off the top of your head? Maybe since we're looking into this, listening to all this stuff that you want to shout out to all our viewers, maybe someone has it. Totally oh, self- I don't have that much on my Want List anymore because I, yeah, if I have to, I can live without them. Okay. But if I if I come in a record shop or so and I see the first cradle of filth, I will buy it. Right, a cradle but, of filth. <laughs> yeah, the, the principle of evil made flesh. You can say what you want, but it's an awesome record. It is an awesome record. Yeah, I think their legacy is maybe a bit tarnished, but um, that first <laughs> the first the first the first one the EP. And then it's um, Dusk and Embrace, and then it's uh, the one about uh, Elizabeth Battery, um, where she's sitting in the bath filled with blood. That one, I had it on vinyl when I was 20 years or so, and I sold it. And the guy I sold it to, he said, maybe you'll become a really big vinyl fan later on, and you'll be sorry you sold it to me. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I, I sold it because I got... From my brother, he got it at work because his, his boss or, or um, colleague knew I was into black metal. I got the, the Celtic Cross version on CD with the horrible drum and bass remix of one of the songs. It's just uh, terrible. So I got the CD and I thought, okay, I can sell the vinyl now. Sold for 300 Belgian francs, which is seven uh-huh. and a half euro. <laughs> but I don't regret it. Nah. It's- 100 euros now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Minus, there's, there's, uh, yeah, there's minus some... like, that, like Escape. Uh, if you have the first press on blue, I would love that so, for this episode. I think I have a black, black one. Because Principle of Evil Made Flesh, I, I can get it easily from Discogs, but. Yeah. yeah. It's... I will get it someday, somewhere. It's more fun to just wait for it and find it. The, the best day for you will be Corona's over, you're going on a city trip, you're walking into a record store after having a great breakfast and you find that record. <laughs> Isn't that the perfect day? <laughs> it would be nice. Uh, that's something I look forward to a lot. Yeah. That's always the perfect day. But other than that, I, the last records I bought, like from Discogs, who were pricey, was like In Fiddle Art from Sai, the three LP version from um, The Crypt, I think. And the um, Ducaria, Raw to the Rapine, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. That's one I've also bought for like, I don't know, 50, 50 euro. I'm going to write it down. Ducaria? Yeah. What's it called? Raw to the rapine, rapine. Don't know how to pronounce it, but you'll find it easily enough. Ducaria, yeah. something that I know the name, but and, um, I haven't really delved into it. Um, maybe that's something for next week. Um, Sai. That's something to get into because you know everything and I know nothing. So 
maybe it's more of a uh, new band recommendation episode. I'll jot it down. The first, I almost have them all, but looking back now, the first two are the essential ones. Okay, one and two. It's um, in fiddle <laughs> arts. It's the second one with the really Japanese uh, artwork. That's where you play. Play. No, yeah. no, no. That's a uh, scorny feet. That's the first one. That's the first. Okay, I know that. But I like it. It's it's. Yeah, it's an amazing record as well, but in fiddle art for me is, is yeah. I sent in my uh, top 10 of all time to uh, the Pankraker. I'm still working. I, not working. Think, I think I put it on number one. I didn't think, think too much of it, but I didn't. I just made it on the spot. I'm so thinking it's very possible well, I forgot something, but. Yeah, I'm thinking too much of that one because I still haven't sent it in. <laughs> I had to do a um, I had to do a top five compilations for Boots Haven't Seen. I don't know if you know that one. Um, I know the name, and I never uh, read it or so. It's kind of cool. Zine. It's from a guy in Brussels, I think. Uh, so I did that top one. Top five and... compilations. What? Top five compilations. Yeah, he just he he's going to do a article about compilation records, and there okay. are three ask three guys to do the outro page, I guess, with their top five. And I was thinking about a thing, and then I was just looking through my records, and then let's just look for five compilations you have and write about that. It's just to it can also be a compilation of one band. Yeah, yeah, for example, yeah. Okay. I haven't thought. I took it more literally because they're doing about classic compilations. So I just looked. But Black, Black and Volume 1 is the best compilation ever. <laughs> yeah, but it, it got I, me into the whole thing. I usually, the rule for myself also for the end of the year lists, I um, I have to have them in my collection, talk about or choose them. So if, for example, let's say, a uh, real stupid example, let's say Metallica is releasing an album last day of uh, this year, and I, I can't get it, it won't be in there, even though it's the best album ever, just because I have to have a border somewhere. And the border is I have to have it in the collection because I did a top 50 two years ago or something like that. So it's endless, and so I can cap it somewhere. And that's yeah. one. So to talk about compilations, if someone asks what's your favorite compilations, I have to have it in the collection because otherwise I would still be thinking about it, I guess. Um, so which one did you take? Or is that secret? <laughs> I got the first, uh, the first one. Go to War Exit, the um, black metal comp. I don't know where it is. It's the, one, the one from this year? No, it's from two. Weird thing was, all my compilations except for one were from 2018. So it was. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's incredible. I found this one. Uh, it is the Black Metal Revivalism Part 1. Okay. It's an ode to Lord Puke, and it has all go to war bands like Obscure at Satan, uh, Goat Blood, Forgotten Spell, Reek of Unseen Gas Fumes, Void Prayer, stuff like that. So it's from all over the world, all genres mixed together. You know, upcoming tracks for the label, I think. But at that one, uh, Bloodlust, which is a hardcore compilation from Denver. Uh, the Corpsant compilation. What else? Tasmania Volume 2 with bands like Craft Cross and Slave House and stuff yeah. like that. Crazy stuff from Australia. And then the other was. I'm not sure what number five was actually. We'll have to buy we'll have to buy I'll get I'll get I'll get my second favorite compilation. Right. I'll crack my second favorite beer. Oops. But it's not a metal compilation at all. Perfect. It's the For Your Own Change. For Your Own Change, Psychedelic Ballads and Dirges. Okay. 1968 to 1974. What is it? It's um, all, yeah, Psychedelic Ballads and Dirges. <laughs> no, it's, it's really... Um, 
it has things on it like uh, yeah, a lot of lot of stuff is DR Hooker, if you know him. Yes. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, smiling faces, which has been done by the flying pickets or something. I say it's, yes. It's it's like uh, like uh, that's come together by Al Green in, in that style of music. Oh. Let's stay together. That's and uh, Shin, Shin Jung Hyun, no. the godfather of the North Korean psych rock, something like that. No. But it, it's really, yeah, you should have a listen. It's really okay. great. It took me a while to band get band. into, but uh, uh, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, the first name you said was D.R. Hooker, and I said, yeah, yeah, I know him, but <laughs> I know Dr. Hooker. <laughs> But uh, okay. maybe it's Dr. Hook or Hooker. Maybe it's the same. It's like the Christian, the Christian guy who does psychedelic, uh, yeah, yeah, psychedelic singer songwriter almost. No, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> Definitely not sure. <laughs> but it's a really great compilation, especially the Shin Jung Hyun and the Men track, yeah. featuring Yang Hyun. <laughs> that that's. Maybe the the seven inch of that is on my want list as well. Okay. And I, I know I've seen it on Discogs, but I can't find it anymore because the guy has done so much seven inches, and the name is written in Japanese or in uh, Korean, and oh, I just can't can't find the seven inch on the. I should scroll through everything, but I don't feel like doing. Fly them all and just sort it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Send me send me a picture of that one later. Because I will. Okay, I will do. Okay. Will do. Um, the last thing we're going to do because we hit the hour mark. Um, yeah, what you listen to, I guess, this week, except for Ashbor and Fell Voices. It's not that much because I listen to Ashbor and Fell Voices. But um, the first thing I was listening to is the Septich. Um, it is a seven inch on Mesaka Un Oil, the uh, English death metal label. They have a seven inch called or an EP called Septic Decadence, which is four tracks. And it is released at the same time, New Undergang, which is also on here, um, was released. And I think it's it's not that people don't know it, but I think Undergang will be the biggest death metal record this year, maybe. Um, I think it's been in the shadows, the uh, Septic seven inch. And it's, it's by far the best thing death metal related I heard this year. I think it's even for me. Than Untergang. Um, it is four tracks. It is heavy, it is brutal, it is catchy, it has groove in some parts. There are these we, weird bass lines going through that kind of remind me of what Alkyrdale is doing, but then in that metal, just sometimes you hear these glorious bass tones. Um, it is very violent. Um, one track is called um, The Serial Killer. And I'm not going to. There's stuff about serial killers, so it has it marks all the cliches. But the singer has this, um, yeah, it's almost a lion esque roar, but then in a bit because it's bits, yeah. There's a bit of effect on there, but it's fast. Above all, it is the fastest thing I heard in five years. I think the drumming is insane. So that's a, a lot of high praise. I know. <laughs> But, it, I, yeah, but it, I, it's the fast, fastest thing in that metal, or just all around? What I I have a bit of knowledge. If I turn the camera, there's a drum over there. So I'm not a drummer, but I know a bit about tempo and drumming. And when I'm at work, I sometimes like everybody tap along or play along. I guess with it, and there is the snare. I I can't I can't do that. That's a beat per minute. I can play. I guess. Okay. Okay. But, uh, that's weird. That's weird for dead metal, no. Yeah, it goes really fast. It, it's a blast. It's a blast beat in that metal. Yes, okay. it has in that metal. So it leans into grinds. Okay. It doesn't have that crust feel. So it's the it's a very heavy over the top grind. I would say, but it's four tracks. It's the guy. Um, forgive me for pronunciation, but Ugur Yildirim is his name. He's the guy who is also in Tapos and who is also in Ascendancy, which is another band that. Just blows my mind. That entire dead metal Denmark scene is something that I don't know. Denmark as a whole is crazy with corpse sound stuff, and then with 
you know, um, extremely rotten stuff over there. And even some, a label like Boss Bosch Isolation, which maybe you're not familiar with, but they did the first slack, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So Bosch Isolation is more of an electronic dance techno label, but they did some weird okay. shit. It's like Reme in Belgium. I don't know Reme, that. Reme, Reme Records is a sort of a techno label from Brussels, but they did the first Wolvenist. Oh. So it's probably because they, they know uh, Kirby or so. Probably. It's, it's really weird because I, I ordered it from them when I got to know Wolvenist before they were on Van Records. And I looked through their other cat, the other records in their catalog and was like, oh, what, what's, what is this? <laughs> I um, woven as that really late on my later on my radar. Um, they convinced me with their show at Roadburn for sure. One Which of one? Band, um, I think when the, the the big record came out, the black one on Van. When they played uh, on okay. the at the main stage. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that one. The um, I the thing I remember most because the music was incredible. I, like I said, Roadburn. I don't think I saw 10 sets complete, and that is one of the sets I saw complete. Mm. 10 is maybe a bit much, but you know what I mean. Um, but the visuals, I, rem I will remember, they, it's not... Did you ever look at visuals during a live show and felt uneasy or, you know, <laughs> not scared? <laughs> That's a bit much, but just like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> they had some visuals. I, I know what I saw, but I can't recall what I saw. It was... Mm. It was it's funny because, because the best show of them I saw was also at, Wall, at the Roadburn, at the, at the little bar. What was it called? Cool the Sack? No. No, 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 no. The one at, at the end of the little street. The, the very uh, tight one. Yeah, where you had to go through the, through the small hallway and then you came in the, the venue. I hate that. But, <laughs> but that, that's where I saw Wolvenist. Oh. Um, and that, that's the best show I saw from them. And that, that was without visuals. And they didn't have their, their yeah. altar with, with bones and stuff. And it was just the music was, it was so good. And I saw them like five, six, seven times in the meantime. That's the best show I saw. And that's, I also think that's, that's for me, that will be the defining Wolvenist show. Was it that maybe? Sorry, that was on the white records with the purple and yellow. I guess. Yeah, yeah, but maybe they all they already played songs from the other one because it's oh. it's few years few years after uh, uh, their self title was released. Okay, but but that because that show was so good, I think I didn't go to see the uh, Void Void the records called no the black one. Yeah, yeah. I didn't go to see that one on the main stage because I've seen them at their very best and I can go again, but it won't be the same. Sounds a lot like me and uh, Wolves in the Throne Room, man. <laughs> I had the same thing with um, uh, Devil's Blood. Hmm. Devil's Blood at um, Hellfest 2010 it was so, so good. And I saw them again in 2012 or 13 at Hellfest. And I saw them at Magazine Quatre, and, and, but it was never, never, never at that, that level again, no. It's great to, that, good to know that they played a festival and that gave you more than, um, than a room show. It was, was almost the clearest sound I ever got from, on a, from a live show. I'm usually not jealous at people, but... <laughs> <laughs> because um, I started really late in my discovery with all, I mean, if I'm speaking 2010, Tau, 2012, Ashbor, it took me a long way to get into black metal. I think 2008, I discovered maybe Gorgeholt, and then it went, you know, a bit mm -hmm. European instead of American. But when I first heard Devil's Blood, it must have been 2012, and I, the first thing I thought was, Jesus, with what kind of crappy music is this? But now, yeah. going through everything I know, we are, I'm now almost 40. Um, I think since, I think maybe in the last few years of Devil's Blood, I really got into them, and now it's 
top 10 bands. I mean, when I'm doing my Pankage top 10, top 10, uh, come Reap will be definitely in there. Just because I, I even after all these years, after making a video about about them a hundred times, I still can't explain what it is that just yeah keeps keeps me coming back to those records and yeah, it's just very very good was, sound. And yeah, I saw I saw a guy commenting they can go into super long guitar solos without it getting bored boring, mm -hmm. and that that's indeed they had three guitar players. I remember them seeing them at Magazine Catra and they were all on, on a line and one step, step took a step forward and he was playing his solo. It took a step back. Another one was stepping forward, playing a solo. And yeah, it did, it did not bore at all. Yeah, it is. I and, and I heard from a friend of mine who, who often was a roadie for Vanderbust, which were, were linked a bit to um to devil's blood yeah, they and they them. toured a lot together and, and he saw devil's blood like 20 times or so and he said oh yeah the the show at hellfest 2010 that's that's one of the shows they thought of as they think of as one of their best shows themselves is that online somewhere Do you know i don't know no. i don't know hellfest has a lot of stuff online so i hope it's online maybe just it won't be the same, but it is something. But be it's sure it's a 2010 show. 2010. Maybe the next one was was also very good, but in my head it was like I had the defining show. I I did I witnessed it, and nothing could be better. So okay. maybe it was I blocked it, but <laughs> also check out the Melvin show from Hellfest. That one I've seen. That was insane. It was insane. Um, do you have anything you've been listening to? Yes. I finally felt like listening to uh, the last Scappy record because it's something I have to be in the mood for because if I'm not in the mood, I can put it on and uh, it just won't work. But I did now and it's pretty good. Did you ever get into the previous Scap material? Um, I did listen to it, but not, not very much. Mm. So I should revisit like thousand other records, but I should revisit, but maybe this can be a trigger to also revisit the one, the collaboration with Wormlust. I'll, um, for next week, I'll do the, um, the first two Psy records. And then as my offering, we'll do a uh, scalp, maybe uh, like we did Ash Barfell voices, maybe dig into their discography. So it's Psy and okay. okay. I like it when they, the next one comes out of the, uh, conversation we don't have to struggle for it i guess yeah i was thinking because i i know the first two side records by art you should give me something i don't know but these yeah. ones yeah i do I, I know them but but yeah you can listen to them for a hundred times and still don't know what's coming Cap, it will be we both know them but we will get to know them and then for side it will be cool to hear someone who has exhausted these records fresh yeah Never heard this record. Maybe I heard the first one once because you're yeah. talking. The, you know, the very first... long, long track from the first one, ten minutes or so, which was on okay. um, Black and Volume One as well. That's oh, yeah. such a great oh. record. Yeah, when I was DJing at the Boss, sometimes uh, I did oh. it a lot of times. But when I put it on, sometimes people were coming. Oh, what's this? What's this? I miss those nights. Yeah. I also listened to Surprise Surprise, finally mm -hmm. came in, last over. I, um, I, was clicking, great record. I was clicking to your sale and I, um, it took everything in me not to uh, put that one in and to put the assassination in, but, you know, next time. <laughs> they won't yeah. go out of print. No. I, uh, I scored some stuff in the sale that was, you know, incredible records for, like, for example, um, Mons Veneris with um, Vitala. Yeah. Is it, no, no, it's um, yeah Vitala, but I can't yeah. remember right now. That was a record that was on my want list, not the want list, but you know that I had in card for so many times, and now it was a perfect moment to get it. So yeah, great sell. Is it still going on? Yeah, 
people. Yeah, it's still going. My Facebook ad is running until tomorrow. Okay. So I may may close it down tomorrow. May have another week. I need records to go because I need to make room for uh, upcoming releases. I did my best, I think. <laughs> so did a lot of other people. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I also got some stuff from the... Oh, yeah, this, this is a great one as well. I don't know what Jean it is. It's, um, their previous one was on Fallen Empire, I think, before they uh, yeah, stopped and became Misty Scouts. Okay. It's a French black, black metal band, and it has some... Um, the end of the record is a bit um, Gate of Nana, Beherit-like. Okay. It's like the dun, dun. but it has had a lot of a uh, lot of different styles in it. It's really good. Vocals can be a bit offsetting, but check French? it. Yeah, I um, I was listening to a French record. Which one was it? Saint Marie de Lou. No, it was a different one. Or maybe it was that one. Yeah, it was that one with the dry French yeah. record with the vocals. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't listened to it. I got it. It's, it's arrived, but I haven't listened to it. How do it look? Right? The cover is incredible. It's the, the nun with the sword. Do you have the color version, the red one? Uh, I have no idea. Is yeah. this, is, is the, I think there is only one version. There's definitely a red and a black version. I will check. I have been... Um, According to Discogs, there is only one, one vinyl version. Okay. Maybe Pressed I... on red, red, black, smoke, merge. Ah, so it's, okay. red, it's red and black. Maybe I saw a picture with no lights and it was a black uh -huh. one. <laughs> Just like blood. So let's... And I got, got some stuff from the Norwegian dead and trash scene. Okay. Wait, this is reptilian. I don't know that one. And this is uh, the first um, sepulcher. It's like, do you like obliteration? Yeah. Yeah, it's like you have obliteration and their trash project, Necromantium. And then mm -hmm. with this one, you have um, sepulcher and you have a trash project, Inculter. And it's, it's yeah. super energetic. And the other one is uh, reptilian and uh, sepulcher are dead metal, and uh, inculture is like, yeah, high speed trash metal with shouting vocals, and it's the yeah. energy oozes from the record. And a picture of that, too. <laughs> yeah, just so I know what to put in the link. Um, the last thing I wanted to, because I talk about Untergang, but it will be in my end of the year list and it will be coming in. So I'm talking about that in the video. Um, the last thing I wanted to show when I'm this, I listened to a digital, but this came in yesterday. It is Moulin Banal with De Misère d'Anglu, I think. It's also French in title, but it's from Canada. Um, this is out on Forbidden Sonority Productions. Um, it is a guy I know from Instagram who hyped me to it because he the first track is a uh, violin track and he played he played for them for the band. Um, mm -hmm. What it is is they had an EP I think last year. The name escapes me. I'm sorry, which was one of those records that came and went and just went up. It sold out. And now uh, they have a full length, which just is expanding on the sound of the EP. It is Canadian. Um, it has stuff like, um, let's see, Vive le, le Québec Libre. So I'm not sure if that is their version of something like NS, but it's, I don't know. It doesn't feel too sketchy or too bad. Um, sound wise, it is. The production is a bit weird because it's incoherent in some parts. But on the other hand, it is black metal infused with a lot of Canadian folk music. Uh, there is some flute on here. There is some, you know, I don't know. It is a weird record. 
but it drew me in due to the fact that um, yeah, it's it from Cordereda product, Productions. I get mails from them, so I, I know I saw the name. Yeah, but but I get like every week I get a mail with three or four new records. So they mostly do very limited tapes, so yeah. it's hard to to listen to them all. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think Code Red is the also the tape label that does the Ivernak stuff, which is also it's always very limited and very hard to get. Um, I'm not sure where these guys situated, where these guys are situated, but um, yeah, probably oh. Quebec, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, label wise, Mon Montreal, Quebec. Ah, okay. Forbidden Sonority, I know they um, they put it out, but yeah. not really sure. Um, California. What's California? Forbidden um, son Sonority uh, Records. They're from oh. California. They're I literally, I literally know zero of their bands, which doesn't mean a thing, of course. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's uh, we're getting into, and it's one of those records that probably will disappear. So if you are interested in some raw, that it has those affected vocals a bit buried in the mix. The guitar is very hellish. Uh, what did I write down? The hellish guitar. It's that's queerly guitar sound, but it works in this. I mean, it works in this mix of sound, I guess. Um, yeah. The only problem with this record is it's a bit too short. It's hard to. I don't know. I listened to it a few times digitally, and now, again, it has a lot of tracks, but it feels like a very short record, which is also. Maybe a good thing. I'm not sure. A good thing, of course. Yeah, the Chambre Froide is also just an EP. Like oh, yeah. eight, 18 minutes or so. Okay. But it's really good. Yeah. All right. Do you have another thing you listen to? I put on this one a few times. I saw them live once at the Magazine Catra and I liked it a lot. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite. Yeah, I ne never really got into these EPs. And then the, the new one came last year or two years ago. And I listened to it and I thought it was very boring. Mm, I remember. Uh, but now I, I ordered this one from Van Rekos with uh, the latest Urfaust. And I thought, oh, I'm going to put it on. It's also still a, a red copy. Mm -hmm. Don't know if, if it's a mistake by a fan or not. You can't choose a color anymore at their side. So, uh, and I put it on, and especially the A side. I think it's the the. I think the B side is the oldest one. Oh no, it's not. Yeah, the B side is the oldest one. So, spheres like that. I I, like yeah, I, re I really like it now. It reminds me of um, also of the mysterious. Yeah, a lot of times. Mare was and something I, I, I saw them a, a second time live, and I, then it was like, yeah, yeah, maybe my expectations were high from the first time. Did you saw them the second time in Bergen? Uh, no, no, I think I saw them twice in Magazine Catra. Hmm. You went to the you went to the Terrace Festival, right? Beyond the Gates. Uh, yeah, but not not that year. I think 2015 and 2017. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe 2000. There was one show. I know they played in some kind of cave somewhere remote. Yeah, I wasn't there. I was there with the the edition with um, the first edition 2015 was because I really wanted to see Mister Me. Oh, yeah. It was. I think it was their second show ever. The first outside of Iceland. Yeah. But the best show was One Tail, One Head. By far, it was uh, such an energy. And uh, uh -huh. yeah, but it's, it's one That's of my time top, top not... 10 shows ever. Okay. The first time we talked, really, because we uh, we knew each other from you were doing the register at the boss, you know, when there were shows. I think yeah. the first time we really talked is um, you grabbed me and you said, because yeah, we knew each other, but not really. And then you grabbed yeah. me. You have to buy Mr. Ming tomorrow or something, or, or you have to buy <laughs> tomorrow or today because it will sell out. And I uh, I listened and I got it, and that's when um, the Iceland chapter opened up, I guess. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, 
would, but, would have opened up anyway, but yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, the one tail one head. I didn't know the band, I saw them, it was so good. I listened to it afterwards on uh, uh digitally, and it just doesn't get me. I have records of them in my distro right now, but I don't need them in my personal collection for one, that, tail, one tail one head, yeah. I think there's fun records and there's one track with the, the tiger or something the with Pride and Tiger. Yeah. 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 The slow one. That's, That's by far their best track, I think. If I was a metal DJ like uh, Ampli, <laughs> <laughs> I would play that track just to get shit going, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I saw them once with uh, Magua and the Sydney in Holland. And it was a great show, but it was. Yeah, I think they should. If they still existed, they should have leaned into the Venom shit a bit more. Um, yeah. We have the Havaza, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I wrote yeah. down Iceland as a uh, future episode too, so. Yeah, we can do so so much. I also <laughs> got this this one in like yesterday, so I had to make a lot of orders because people are waiting for this for a long time. Do you still have it? The Abbey Rock tape box. Uh, no, no, they're all sold out. It looks kind of whimsy. There's seven tapes. I had no idea they had seven uh, demos. But it, it's, the box doesn't really fit very good, and you can all uh, hardly get the, the lid off. And the, the lid is also, maybe that's very 90s, but uh -huh. the, the side of the lid is, has been printed as well. So if you put it, if you put the, the lid on, it's like you have this box with the, yeah, it just, just looks very weird. Yeah, looks kind of shitty. But I'm curious to uh, to listen to it because uh, yeah, they, they are one of my favorite black metal bands, and I never listen to the demos for one reason or another. I'll write at your down too. Take one of the old albums, the first or the second. We'll see. Uh, the very, very last thing I want to um, talk about is the, because I listened to it only today, um, going back to Edgebor and Fell Voices, you automatically stumble upon Gilead Media. And yeah. these are still running very strong. They have, uh, and I, in my research for Fell Voices, I noticed that they are from, give me a minute, Santa Cruz, California, and they went to New York. Um, I'm not saying it's the same members or whatever, because this band wants to be anonymous, if you will. Mm -hmm. but her heretical or heretical sect. Have you seen it on Gilead Media? Yeah, I've seen it. And I, I immediately thought, OK, I have their previous one in my distro, like three or four copies. Nobody buys it. <laughs> it's with members from um, it's a side project from Predatory Light. Yes. No? Well, I looked, I started looking because, of course, you, you are curious who is in there. It mentioned <laughs> Matt Bloom, but I don't think, I don't hear it too much um, from us. Whatever. Um, but yeah, Predatory Light was one of the bands that came up and, you know. The record is quite good, in my opinion. I listened to it once. It um, It is is prescribed as blackened dead doom. I only hear doom in the parts that are intros or outros or transition tracks. Uh, it is very blackened dead, I would say. There are a lot of blast beats. There's a lot of early death metal. Um, yeah, but it's quite good, in my opinion. It has a huge production. It, it just, yeah. you can, Listening to it digitally, I can only imagine what it will be sounding like on the turntable or something. It sounds like an expansion. It is so huge. Um, okay, I will check it. It sounded a bit, if I have to describe it, what the influence is, kind of, it sounded like a uh, death metal bolzer, maybe. Kind of hear some bolzer coming in, early bolzer, not hero, but, um, you know. Okay, and this isn't that death metal? <laughs> That's up for debate. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Does it pop up like in that metal? Yeah, maybe. Why not? I haven't thought about it that way. I'll add it to my 2020 playlist, 2020 which has uh, 
which which uh, takes already 36 hours and 13 minutes. Jesus. Is that, is that private or is that public? It's uh, private. I can put it public if you want. Just just records I saw, uh, records I have from this year, like uh, Flasterhuis and Tyria and uh, Reveror and Malacht and stuff like that. What is it? Over, over Faust. It's on Spotify. And I just just put in records I saw in your list. Oh yeah, that might be interesting. I just put it in. Okay. So it has also um, Ominous Resurrection, which is really really great. And Avon Housewolf, which I haven't listened to, but it's without vocals. Oh, okay. I heard. Because you talked about the previous one, then I guess. Yeah, yeah. the 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 red one. The red one is the. Oh, yeah. uh, What's it called? Dead? Yeah, I don't remember. You talked about that, that. title. Yeah, that, that one is really, really great. The previous one, it's called Death Magic. The new one. But also, yeah, the, no, no, the, 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 the really great one is called Death Magic. But it also has stuff like Butcher, which are awesome album. My own records, own releases, Shari Meslantea, I only did two this year. Um, Armageda, Boris Mersbo, which dropped like a few days ago. Oh, okay. I haven't heard it. I no, me neither. That's Boris. Um, yeah, Silver Knife, Saint Marie de Loup, Rope Sect, Black Curse, Paysage Diver. Black Curse will be high up in mind. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's really great. I think um, Jeff from Dawnbreed. Yeah, he was the first one to get it to me. Uh, he ordered. Uh, he ordered um, four to seven inches from me, oh, okay. and then I was I was at uh, the base in Utrecht selling records, and he came to me. Hey, hey, I ordered four records from you, and he he, had, he was wearing a shirt from Black Curse. He saw them at the uh, Killtown Deadfest. Oh, Jesus, he, said, was... he said, "He said, whoa, this this one, this is the best new band for me.'" Yeah, same. And I, I have so much to listen to. Pharaoh Overlord didn't pay attention. Oransi Pazuzu, nah, just can't get into it anymore. Imperial Triumphant, Dark with a Rising. Yeah, put it on a few days ago. Do you know the singer? Uh, no. Aaron Turner from ISIS. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. On uh, on the zero, it was the guy from um, um, what's it called? It's, it's one of those old dead metal bands from Finland. Um, it's it's Demo- the ugly, ugliest shirt in my collection. <laughs> Demolish. Demolish, yeah. yeah. At least you have the shirt. <laughs> I saw them at Chaos Descent and it was so good I had to get a shirt and there were no nice shirts and when there are no nice shirts I buy the ugliest one they have. This is a nice this is the most nice shirt I have. From Ashborough. Yeah, from that tour. First tour. Okay. I have a hoodie which is too big and completely torn, so it's it's my uh, cozy at home hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a shirt, I have a charcoal grey shirt. But so many releases this year. Uh, Brickfield haven't listened to it. MS, MSW, which is linked to Mismore, I think. Witch Hazel, Panzerfaust, Enslaved, I listened to a few times. Do you know, do you know Hate Forest? As in, do you listen to previous Hate Forest releases? No, I haven't. Yeah, I, I've heard it once or twice, and it, it's good. It's like the Ukrainian scene. What is it? It sounds very. Russian, Russian okay. black metal. Don't know what that is, but to me it sounds very Russian. I've seen it pop up. Um, yeah, it's on my to-do list, but nothing more. And heretic, oh, yeah, okay, just edit it right now. <laughs> but I have to recommend something. It's the um, Deceptage, yeah, Deceptage EP. That's how, how do you write that? Um, Septage, S E P T A G E, with septic decadence. Yeah, okay. Artist like cover. Yeah. 
septic decadence. Very, very um, um, carcass-like cover, no? Yes, but it's small, <laughs> small carcass. Okay. All right. So All right. Next week, uh, it's... shouldn't shouldn't we do a best of? Uh... Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, let, let's instead do next. of instead of Sai and. Uh... Yeah, but we have we have one more week. Um, we have Christmas. Let's do Sai and Scott, and then um, the last week is the is New Year, and let's do um, our end of year list then. Okay, but I I need a lot of time for my end of year list. We can do it in January. Too. No big, okay. No okay. I'll do one for the channel, but uh, it'll probably be the same for. Not everybody is looking at the same video, so I won't mind too much. Okay. Okay. Next week, scoff and sigh. All right. I will dig them out, but only the first sigh records, or so they, the they have like two. ten full lengths. I have to cut it somewhere, and you said first okay. two, so. Yeah, first two are the best. Otherwise, if we do ten records, I won't know what to say. I'll get totally confused, and I won't listen to them. So. You will get confused by listening to their discography already. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye. All well, right. Great. Next. next week, maybe in two weeks. Yeah, maybe we'll two see. weeks. We'll see how much time I have to listen to stuff. It's Christmas. What are you going to do? It's Christmas. <laughs> Okay. So okay. hot, so pondered, but that's it. <laughs> See you. Bye.